Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Ico OH10S Sapphire Mirage. Um, this review really wouldn't make any sense uh, if I actually didn't also review its uh, older brother or predecessor, the OH10 Obsidian. So I got the Sapphire Mirage and then I said to myself, well, let me get the Obsidian as well. I just want to say that this is not the first time that I have the Obsidian. This is not the first time I have actually the OH10. Uh, I came into contact with the OH10 a couple of years ago and my experience back then wasn't really good. So I just uh, kind of left it and I never really paid attention to it. But, um, you know, when I decided to do this, this uh, review, I said to myself, well, I cannot really uh, speak in a fair and just manner about the OH10S if I don't talk about the OH10 and so I said to myself well you know what just get another OH10 probably you got a lemon and uh, and that's it I actually kind of have come to the conclusion that my uh, original OH10 was a lemon and and that's why I didn't like it that's why I didn't enjoy it and that's why I just didn't see the magic that everybody talked about it when they mentioned the OH10 anyway let's get into this I'm gonna uh, well I'm gonna open both boxes so you guys can have an idea although Obviously, the, 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 the most important one is the uh, 10S box. So you take out the sleeve, you know, some, some uh, uh, waifu stuff here in the front with some information in the back, the, the usual uh, nice, I mean, really nice presentation. Uh, Ico uh, doesn't seem to, to, to be playing around when it comes to how to showcase their products. Some paperwork inside here, the IEM scam sitting over there, uh, and then tips I'm actually using uh, the stock tips on the, the, the OH10 they work fine and then the case and the cable the case and the cable are uh, two two items that I think um, well they don't do justice to the OH10 or to the OH10S let's just put it that way uh, the case um, is a little bit on the way too small side and the way that the IMs and the and will sit inside is really not going to give it too much protection, or at least the protection that I would prefer to 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 give or I like to give ideally. Uh, and then the cable itself. I mean, uh, look, uh, I guess uh, money was spent elsewhere, but this is not a cable for an IM of this quality and of this caliber. That's my opinion. Um, uh, we have seen many times before that. Uh, uh, you know, cables of, of very good quality can be had at IMs which are much cheaper. And when we're talking close to two hundred dollars, you know, we, we want something which um, matches the overall experience, not only the unpackaging of you know the unboxing of the product, but then the product itself. Okay, so anyway, that's just a little remark. Uh, and basically, what I'm saying about the OH10 applies to the OH10S. Both of them share the same. I'll actually just open up the box. Of the sapphire mirage so you can see it's basically the same style of box experience yeah you also open it up same thing some paperwork over here okay and again ims there tips over there which is basically the same thing and again the same case and the same cable um you know i i, I don't want to kind of beat a dead horse here but i think uh, ico could do much better they they um strike me as a company that not only knows what they're doing but that uh, has the ability and the know-how to improve and accept uh, and accept that this is not an area where they were let's say uh, favorable um as for the names themselves obsidian or uh, sapphire mirage i'm sure that they must be some sort of a of a meaning behind them but uh, i cannot really uh, um, I just don't know. I would, I would have to. Maybe some of you guys can shed some light on what is the uh, the, the reason behind the name. Um, both of them. Well, I'm gonna actually just put this away. Okay, let's just grab here the OH10 for a second. Um, you know, the first thing that strikes you when you grab the OH10 is the weight. Okay, uh, and I mean this thing just. It just screams quality. End of story. Uh, if this was uh, an IM that cost a thousand dollars, the quality that's here in terms of the build uh, would would be uh, uh, 
uh, more than more than ample. Uh, the, I've I've held IEMs of two and of three thousand dollars in my hands that do not have this sense of weight. You know, weight is not obviously a, a synonymous with quality. We know that, but it's it's good when when you pick up something with a certain amount of weight and you kind of you know feel, okay, I've got something serious in my hands. So the build quality of both the the original OH10 and the now uh, OH10S is absolutely exceptional. The actual shell looks very similar. Um, I would even say uh, that it is exactly the same shell. What has changed has been obviously the the faceplate. The original OH10 had this kind of uh, finish, uh, you know, like uh, I can't really. Uh, can't really say what it is but had this uh, irregular finish which gave it a, a very unique uh, very uh, very uh, kind of industrial feel okay uh, almost like a, I don't know it, it just looks very good while the OH10S um, the faceplate is basically the crossover network which is being used by the IEM uh, and then it's all embedded in glass so it just looks really really good uh, also uh, they've used um, some sort of um, um, they call it um, ph photochromic uh, um, let's say layering so that apparently this uh, you know will, will have a different color or or exude different colors if you are in the, in the sun or if you give it a certain amount of, of, of light um, well it is what it is but again the oh 10 is just beautiful construction solid you know um, now you would think that either one of them with the, you know with this weight or this sort of of girth that you would think ah okay but this is a big shell weighs a ton this is going to be a nightmare to actually fit in your ears and you couldn't be further from the truth um, these are probably up there with the best fitting IEMs that I have tried unquestionably uh, and and the the balance they've struck between the weight, the shape, the the everything, has been nothing short of perfect. Because you put the IEM in your ears, uh, and as you can see, I'm using the the whiteboard tips, not the stock ones. And here I'm actually using um, on the OH10S. I'm actually using um, some BGVP whiteboards, but it's basically the same thing. It, uh, it, it the, the difference is minimal. Uh, I just had these at hand and put this on, tried it, listened, I, I liked it, and I just left it. I just momentarily didn't just try the original ones, and it was the same thing. Um, you know, it just is flawless. That's that's all I can say. The weight, uh, the shape, they work so well together that you put them in your ears, and this thing just doesn't come off. It just doesn't come off. In the story, you know, that it stays there. So isolation is perfect, at least with me, isolation is absolutely spot on. Um, you know, I, mechanically, in terms of hardware-wise, I cannot find a single fault on uh, on the Ico brothers, let's put it that way. They are perfect. Um, let's now get into the sound. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the OH10 first, and then, uh, you know, the OH10S... Um, comes in second. So the OH10 I'm, uh, is, I, um, was known for what? Was known for being, and we'll be going back now a good three, three years, maybe four years. Uh, yeah, three years, easily three years. Yes, 20, 2020, I believe it was when it was launched. Uh, I got my one yeah, back in 2020. Um, it, it was known for being an IEM that the moment you listened to it, you were hit by two things, which was an incredibly well done bass, I mean, beautiful. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we think that we cannot have a thick bass without uh, quality. And, you know, Ico proved that, yes, it can be done. It's all down basically to, well, first of all, the driver quality and the 10 millimeter uh, titanium uh, diaphragm driver that they're using here, which I believe is the same that they are using now in the 10S, uh, perhaps just an updated version. But the, the driver, the dynamic driver is is exceptional it's a very good driver and, and that is the first sign uh, that uh, whatever tuning you will implement will be uh, capable of being executed properly so you have to have a good driver and the OH10 as I was saying you know the thing that struck you straight away was the bass it was incredible just thick big 
you know, but had speed, had slam. I mean, in terms of mid-base slam, there are very few high EMs that actually can slam harder or as hard as uh, the, the OH-10. Um, and then it was how clean um, the, 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 the upper mids and treble was. So, yes, we, we could relatively quickly identify that we were in the presence of a V-shaped signature. That's, that was... That was evident, uh, you know, the mids were slightly recessed, but everything just was so well put together that it just sounded incredible. That was it. The OH-10 um, uh, was, was an IM that didn't follow any particular, uh, uh, you know, trend in terms of the tuning. It didn't follow any diffuse field, it didn't follow any Harman tuning, anything. It just it was their own thing and it was amazing and it is amazing. <laughs> Okay, my first experience wasn't good. It was just uh, incredibly shouty. Um, so it wasn't really the bass. It was the problem. It was the upper mids and treble. It was just, it was just ridiculous. So now that I've, uh, you know, repurchased the OH10 and, and I've been listening also to the OH10S, and I can understand that my one definitely there was something wrong there. Period. At the time, I didn't have a rig, uh, so I didn't measure it. So it was just down to my ears, and it just wasn't. It just it just wasn't performing uh, as it should, and I ended up just selling it. Uh, and the person that actually bought it, he loves it. He thinks it's the greatest thing since uh, since ever, uh, and I'm happy for him. But uh, you know, to a certain extent, I hope he doesn't listen to this one. <laughs> anyway, um, so bass was incredible. Mids were a little bit recessed, but very clean, very detailed. Great extension up up top, in terms of timbre and tonality, spot on. You know this is an this OH10 is an IM that kind of follows a little bit um, also that philosophy that kind of uh, you get from Penon and from ISN IMs, which is it's an old school kind of tuning, but it's very well done and it's it kind of uh, fetches inspiration in home speakers. In, in, in a big old home speaker, you know, from the 70s and the 80s. Um, and, and, and it just sounds incredible. It, it just sounds really good. Fair enough. It's not going to be now the IEM for, uh, the, you know, high, high, high quality monitoring and that you want to go and pick up every little twinkly and sparkly. But having said that, having said that, you would be very surprised by how good uh, in, it is in terms of some of its technicality. So I've just mentioned that timbre and tonality for me are perfect. They are, are you know, organic, a little bit thicker than what ideally could be, but still, you know, n nothing that is going to offend anybody, in my opinion. Uh, it, it just sounds you know, perfect. You, you, you listen to, for example, um, I Don't Believe in Love from, uh, from uh, Dido. It sounds spot on you know nothing that can be said there you listen to ups and downs from uh, hector roots lewis it's, it's a reggae song again spot on nothing to be said there feel so good from diane reeves again spot on nothing that can be said there it just it just sounds very correct within its uh, let's say colored nature it sounds very very correct um, and, and it does these songs just as it gives these songs the necessary weight that it, that it requires. Um, going back quickly to the, uh, to the technicality, so the timbre and the tonality is fine. Soundstage, as I was saying, is incredible. The amount of space that you can have, that, or that, that these IEMs are capable of, of uh, reproducing, be it the OH-10 or be it the OH-10S, is just I, I, I mean, for me, I was it was I was surprised because I wasn't expecting it. You know, when you consider it's just a one plus one, um, you, you know, I, I just wasn't expecting it. Yes, there are single DDs which are capable of very good sound stage, but usually these more technically capable IEMs, and in, in, at least in when it comes to sound stage and imaging, usually are multi BA IEMs or hybrids or tribrids. You know, more complex designs, and you know, to have such a simple design. Do soundstage the way that it's done on the OH10. It's I think commendable. Um, so that's it. I mean, basically, I've kind of in a nutshell um, described and, and and given you an idea of what the OH10 is. Uh, sorry, the OH10 is, and and why it deserves and why it deserves the cult following that it has. It is a very well uh, built IM. 
uh, it's only fault in terms of built is the cable and the, the case at least the cable should be a better quality cable to really do justice to what this IM is capable of doing um, I believe actually with regards to the build I believe that one of the reasons behind this weight is that um, they've actually used copper in the shell and that copper uh, usage uh, does yield uh, some acoustic properties that also help uh, in making the, the OH10 sound the way that it sounds uh, so you know it's it's well built it sounds good it's 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 really an IM that still today and there are a few units still floating around uh, makes sense uh, to to have if you want a piece of history let's put it that way okay now enter the OH10s and what have uh, what has ICO done with the OH10s well uh, in in my opinion and after listening to it now for a couple of Days. The, the OH10S is a very slight uh, or very subtle improvement over the original and honestly uh, I think it, it, it made sense. Why? Because the formula of radio of the original was very good and if there were or if there was anything that maybe needed a little bit of uh, attention was just maybe, maybe, and that's what I feel is the difference between the two of them, was just polishing up the upper mids and the treble a little bit. Uh, it's not something that graphically you notice it, uh, in a, well, at least not in a, in a significant manner, but when you listen to certain things like uh, La Belle Dan, Sans uh, Remarque from Chris Botti, you know, the minute 120 to 1 minute 50, when you listen to that, the way that uh, that trumpet comes across, uh, it just feels that extra little bit smoother in the tennis that's it otherwise the rest is the same uh, and I'm, I'm saying this uh, when I'm listening or when I did listen to either one of them under very ideal conditions so really quiet uh, you know no noise and, and and you know because if I was listening to that and normal day to day I, I really wouldn't be able to pick up the difference so uh, when, when I did this uh, well, when I did this review when I'm when when I was listening to um, to the to the OH ten S and the ten and trying to pick up on the differences, one of the things that I did was I made sure I listened to them at night when it was really quiet, no noise, uh, and a lot of the times I was listening to them at like midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, um, and then under those conditions I could see or I could listen rather to those little subtle differences in a sentimental mood from Cecil Norby. I mean, it sounds phenomenal on either one of them, period, you know, it sounds phenomenal. But on the tennis, it, the whole voice just comes across ever so smoother. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's it's so difficult to explain and to sometimes convey in words the, the differences that there are because we, we are talking about two products which are exceptional. Let's let's be very frank here, you know, uh, and, and the, the differences are so minimal that it's... it's but you could... You could figure you could you can pick up on it swept away from Carol Dubok or Elephant from Carol Dubok as well, which is another song that I really like enjoying. Again, the same situation. It just sounds a little extra bit smoother on the tennis. Um, with that smoothness, uh, what comes out or or what is also improved? There's a slight m improvement as well in the timbre and the tonality. If it was already very good, it's now become just that little extra one or two percent more closer to being more realistic even okay it still is a, a let's say uh, under audio file terms perhaps not the, the absolute perfect because it's colored but for me for my taste for my music the timbre and the tonality of, of either one of them is absolutely exceptional and on the tennis they've just given it that little extra little you know two or three percent there um, and then in terms of the sound stage, it's basically the same thing. I noticed a very, very minor improvement again in terms of the imaging. Okay. So there you have it, guys. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, um, this has been, uh, it's been an easy and at the same time, not an easy review. It's been an easy review because I knew that the moment I listened to the OH10, I, I knew that what I had originally was not the, the, what it should be and what I was now hearing was the magic that everybody talked about so when I listened to that 
I said, okay, that's this is impressive. This is really, really good. Okay, uh, and the, I knew that the OH10S, assuming that I got a, a good unit, was going to be at least just as good, and that's exactly it. If there is uh, any issue that I can maybe say that these two IEMs have, it's the problem that, you know, they have a lot of other IEMs at around the same price point, which are also very good. Um, I mean, I could have had a whole bunch of them, yeah. I could have had things like the Tension Cara, I could have had the Full Performer 5, I could have had... Um, uh, the C Audio Yume 2, I could have had uh, uh, even even the 41T from Jazir, I could have put it here as well. Uh, I could also have here uh, the Celeste, the Phoenix Core, I could also have here the Sim God, the EM6L. There's a lot of IEMs at up to the $200 price bracket, which are phenomenal. There's no lack of, of, of good quality, good sounding IEMs in the market now. When when the uh, original OH10 came out, it was a different story. You know, releases were, were more unfrequent. Now, every week, I mean, it's just, well, you have multiple releases. So, you know, it's 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 almost impossible to try and, 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 and keep up with everything that's coming out. I, 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 I know what I'm talking about when I say that, believe me. So... That is the real only, um, I see, obstacle that you will find uh, with regards to the OH10S being more or less successful is because if this, if, if what you want is an organic sound, if what you want is a sound that's uh, old school with phenomenal bass and then great upper mids and treble in the way they, they, they are done, just tonally a, a very nice, very pleasant, very fun sounding IM. This is a no-brainer, okay? This is a no-brainer. There are no other IEMs up to that price that ultimately uh, can do what this does better. There, there isn't. There isn't. Not that I have seen. There are, yes, other IEMs that come close, that do certain aspects well. There are other IEMs that will be more audio file correct. Fantastic, you know, like I mentioned, the, the C Audio, uh, the Yume 2, or even another one which is not very, well, very, very well known, the, the Seventh Acoustic Stargazer. That is a incredible IEM, incredible. Be it, be it not, not for the fact that it's hard to get hold of, you know, that that's a phenomenal IEM. So, depending on what you want, that will kind of be the the the, the area where you will uh, make your decisions, you know, because. Sonically, there is very little to nothing that can be faulted uh, with the 10s. Uh, I'm not even going to be talking much more about the 10 because, you know, it's an IM that uh, whatever is available is still available. It's, it will eventually be uh, uh, phased out, uh, or ha it, perhaps it has already even been phased out. I'm not sure. But so, you know, what is available in terms of the 10 uh, is what is out there in retailers and stores. Uh, and then, you know, that's it. It's gone. So if, if, you're, if you're wanting one, I would say go for the 10S, unquestionably. It's the one that makes the most sense. The 10 would be uh, not a step backwards. No, definitely not a step backwards. But you would be getting something which is... Um, uh, more based on you wanting a piece of history because uh, you know you know the the I look at the OH10 as like uh, the tantrum oxygen, okay. The tantrum oxygen is a reference in terms of a single DD under three hundred dollars. That's my opinion. Period. This is a reference in terms of a hybrid one plus one hybrid up to two hundred dollars. It's the same thing. Those are IEMs that have uh, you know made their mark in the in the, in the uh, in the in the market, uh, same thing goes for stuff like, for example, the Blessing Two and, and the Blessing Two Dusk. Those are other items that have made marks in the market, and that they will they will always be uh, responsible for for a lot of the stuff that we now are getting and for the improvements that we are now getting in the market. I mean, we wouldn't be living the the era that we are living now in terms of planers if it if it wasn't for the seventh for the seven hertz uh, timeless. That's the reality. They were the ones that pioneered. Uh, accessible, well-sounding planars, uh, and, and you know we have to give it to them. And then Lecture quickly picked up on that and also gave us the S12. So they are brands that uh, have in the past uh, released models 
which are basically timeless you know uh, and and the oh 10 is one of those models and if you now want a more uh, let's say up to date uh an i am i am that has that magic then the 10s is, is the obvious choice quickly comparing to what i have here because i'm, I'm going on with this with this review forever i've got here three other iems that um are hybrids and single leds that also kind of have this type of of sound or vibe i haven't i didn't i didn't really go and fetch uh, you know the yumes or anything like that because i just thought those are well known uh, and so what, what's the point so i thought about going and fetch iems that haven't had as much success as they could have possibly had but share a lot of the same dna one of them is the thi5 bgvp red face a one plus two hybrid uh, very very similar to the to the ICO oh 10 s i mean very 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 similar it's got very much that same sort of uh, big bass sound not as big as the oh 10 s the tennis s has got is, is better and then with a very nicely executed mids and treble overall overall this comes out on top it's better built uh, it sounds better but truth be told the, the red face is very good it gives you some of that same dna and when you can pick it up at, at, uh, at sale because i've seen this as low as a hundred dollars uh, usually it goes for about 175 um, you can get this from hi-fi go for example um but i've seen it down at 108 dollars if i'm mistaken and at, at, at that price it's it, you know it's it's uh it's a hard one to pass okay that's one the other one uh, right on the opposite end here yeah, is the Tinker TK300, uh, a OnePlus 2 again, uh, which very much has the same kind of vibe again as uh, the oh 10 um, The base here is even more similar than what in the, is the case of the red face. Um, where it loses to the oh 10 is in the, the polishness of the upper mids and treble. That's got two BAs, so you would assume that it would be a little bit more uh, polished, a little bit more well executed, but no, it's a little bit more harsh. Uh, it, it, it's, it showcases its limits quicker than what the oh 10 s showcases. In terms of price, um, this can be had for around about $120, so I've seen it come down to uh, as low as 85 So again, what would be the reason to go for it mainly uh, you know, would be the price. You know, if you can't reach this far, but you want something that sounds uh, very kind of similar, then that's an option at a much lower value. And then finally, I've got yeah, a single DD, the, the QVC D Magic Solo, um, which it's just in the base that it's really similar to the to the OH10S. Uh, uh, the mids and the highs are not comparable it's it just doesn't it's got a very different sort of tuning it's not that it sounds bad but you know i remember when i initially reviewed it uh, it's not that i disliked it I, I think maybe that i just didn't understand it as well as i understand now uh, with more experience in this in this area uh, and at the time i was very much attached still to you know the the, the oxygen and the hana and the kato and so um I, maybe i didn't give it its deserved chance and maybe i didn't give it its deserved value uh, but it is an im with value it is an im that has got its its uh, its um its strong points let's put it that way and one of them is obviously the bass. It's it's a very very nicely executed bass. Uh, you know, it's got the same sort of weight, same sort of control, same sort of texture of speed that you get from the bass of the uh, of the OH ten uh, It's just then in the mids and the highs that it doesn't keep up. It doesn't have the same cleanliness, the same detail. So it loses out on that aspect. So there you have it, guys. I mean, um, once again, I, I couldn't be I couldn't be more happy uh, to have. Uh, reviewed the oh 10 s and to have uh, rekindled my my experience with the oh 10 and and actually uh, finally uh, you know understand and 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 see the magic that so many others that did get the oh 10 saw all right anyway i'll show you now quickly the graphs and we'll wrap it up all right you take care hi guys and uh, welcome now to the graph section for the ico oh 10 and ico oh 10 s so let me just get some of these graphs out of the way here. Okay, so that's out, that's out, that's out. Uh, and uh, 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 that's out. Okay, 
So this is the graph of the original ICO OH10. Uh, and straight away you can see uh, why it sounds a lot like the way it sounds. First of all, crazy amount of bass, but it's a really good quality bass. Everything stays within a window of 63 to 74, so about 11 dBs. So definitely a V-shaped IEM. But, um, you know, the quality of the space, yes, okay, so there's a bit of, you know, bleed into the mids and, and the, you know, the, 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 the mids all slightly recessed as compared to the, to the upper mids and treble, fine, that's, that's, but you know what, it sounds good. It sounds, it sounds clean, it sounds good, it's, it's detailed, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's really very uh, captivating the sound of, of the OH10. And then you can also see why it has that 3 d that sense of sound stage that, uh, that uh, people talked about and that uh, I, I was able to experience. Uh, this showcases a lot of that. Um, you know, really clean, clean treble, really well executed up top, loads of sp air space. It, it, it's, it's good. Trust me when I say that it sounds really good. And those that, that have the OH10 can confirm. Uh, OH10S, it's basically the same thing as you can see. Uh, the, difference that ex the differences that exist um, are mainly here. And although you could think, oh, okay, but they've kind of lowered it a little bit, it's not as intense. Maybe yes, maybe it is uh, a reality that can be seen in terms of a graph. But what I did listen to and what I did uh, ca uh, capture was a sense of better smoothness, more polish. That's it. It's it's minute, it's minor. It had to be under you know, like I said, ideal conditions. But you can pick up on those ex on that little extra that it's just it's just you know there. Period. It's it's uh, the, the the 10s. I mean, you know, you you you'd think ah, but it's maybe lost some of the th 3Dness in the sound stage or something. Mm, no, nothing. It's it's just as magical, just as magical. Perhaps, like I said, even maybe just a little bit more because of that added polish and the polish that they've given to the whole uh, um, tuning. Okay. As compared then to some of the um, IEMs that I was talking about, compared to the TK300, and I'm going to basically just keep it with 10S from now on. The TK300, um, you can see, is, is very similar. Uh, it's actually similar base curve, although tonally it's not the same thing. It just, it's very, very similar, but it's you can you can pick up on on the quality of the of the execution in the lower frequencies from the OH10S is superior. Uh, mids, uh, yes, not as much extension up top, and and it's here basically the upper mids and, and treble and then the extension up top that you see the differences. The, you know the two BAs are not as polished, unquestionably. Uh, let me actually just change this color here to black so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, it's it's not as polished as the, the tennis is, and then there definitely isn't the same uh, you know uh, sound stage, the same. Uh, imaging capabilities of the tennis. This definitely isn't. And it's got two BAs, so you wouldn't think that, that that would be an issue, but it's what happens. Okay, so that's the TK300. Compared now to the red face, uh, there we go, the BGVP THI5 red face. Um, the first thing that you know jumps to you when you listen to it is that it doesn't have the same slam as uh, the, the the OH10S, uh, the ultimate rumble is very similar, but the same slam is not there. And then again, uh, the same situation like on the TK300, uh, it's got two BAs, uh, but it's somehow it just doesn't sound as polished. It just, you know, it's not aggressive or anything of the sort. No, it's it's fine, but it just doesn't sound. It's it's smooth and, and it's got plenty of detail, but it's just not as as. Um, as polished and above all you notice that it doesn't have the same technicality special especially with regards to a uh, sound stage okay and then finally the D magic solo this one um, the D magic solo it's, look, it's like I said you know when you look at this graph and then you listen to the IEM you you, you question yourself uh, and and the biggest thing about the D magic solo is that 
although you get the, the idea or might get the idea from the graph that it's not as recessed as it is it is very recessed in the mids i mean it it really is and it's not so much the upper mids and the treble that's the problem they just get camouflaged by the amount of monstrous bass you have uh, it actually doesn't have bad technicalities you know soundstage it, it does have a good sense of air but again it doesn't showcase itself because of the monstrous bass and i'm saying this because i actually went to the trouble of toning down the bass slightly with the eq just to see and yes the moment you just bring it down to like you know bring it down to 3 4 dbs this whole area yeah shines completely it just opens up completely and i even went to the as far as just boosting a little bit here this 1k area just very slightly and you know totally different so um i think maybe you know in an attempt to give an im that was very uh, capable in the bass frequencies they didn't follow through with the you know mid upper mids and treble and so but compared to the oh 10 the oh 10 is a better sorry the oh 10 s the oh 10 s is a better im uh, that that's undeniable it's that the slam is is uh, is uh, as good the the low bass rumble i mean I, I couldn't pick up a difference to be honest with you but then in the mids and 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 uh, the treble the the, the oh 10 is just it just is superior period that's it so there you have it guys um i hope you you've enjoyed the review i hope i was uh, clear enough and uh, gave a, a good explanation about the oh 10 and oh 10 is uh, and as, as, as usual, you know, like and subscribe, just smash that button. Any questions you might have, please feel free. If there is any comparisons that you want me to do, I don't have a problem with doing them. You know, you might have to wait a few days, but I'll do my best to answer and, and, and uh, get back to you guys. All right, you take care. Bye-bye.